The year is 1997. After having won the WBO and IBF featherweight title, legendary showboater and British boxer Prince Nassim Hamad has been set on defending his titles. His next opponent is the relatively unknown Jose Badillo, a Puerto Rican challenger who's currently 20 and 1. Does he have what it takes to take out the champ? Or will Prince Nassim embarrass him into oblivion like so many opponents before? Welcome back to Boxing After Dark, where today we're going to be looking at one of the most entertaining fights in the featherweight division of all time. With Prince Naz in his prime, no matter what happened, his fights would be a feast for the fans. And this night wasn't going to be any different. Whether win or lose, the entertainment would be inevitable. Let's get into it. Prince Nassim at this time in his career had already became a star in his own right. With a record of 27 and 0, with two world titles to his name, despite his in and out of the ring antics, you couldn't deny he not only brought style but substance to the sport and was someone to always keep an eye on. This was also the time of his career where he found himself climbing up many fans' pound for pound rankings at the time, some even declaring him the best. Naz wasn't the most humble of fighters, and the build up to his bout against Badillo never showed a different side of him. From the moment the fight was announced, until 10 minutes before the ring walk, Nassim was not afraid to admit what he thought of Badillo, often mentioning how he'd be knocked out in round three, just like the majority of his other opponents. What's going to happen? Well, he says the third. He always says the third. So, I don't know, though. I think this guy is good. Badillo stayed quiet but confident and didn't appreciate Hamad's over-the-top style, believing him to be cheapening the sport's value. On the night of the fight, expectations were high for the prince, Fighting an opponent with as clean a record as Badillo's was seen as a good gauging point as to how confident Nassim could stay against higher level opponents, even if Badillo's record seemed somewhat padded out with no recognisable victories to his name. The fight came on the 11th of October in 1997, and it wouldn't be a Prince Nassim Hamad fight without one of his iconic ring walks. From his recreation of Thriller to arriving on a magic carpet, things were always extravagant with Naz, and tonight wasn't going to be any different. Nassim took his time as he danced his way to the ring, letting Badillo stand around like a fool on a cold October's night. This was something many of his opponents and haters criticised him for, despite how extravagant he could be, at times due to the advantage he'd often find himself with before the fight would even begin. After his infamous front flip over the ropes he was accustomed to doing before each fight, the fight began. Badillo says, I am the best featherweight in the world, and I will prove it here. Let's see. Because fighters who've been resilient previously in their careers, many of them. Mohamed starting well with that jab. Very relaxed. And indulging in a wee bit of impressive Sheffield Arena with 13,000 fans inside. In with the deal. With a good left hand, that's the one we've got to watch out for from Badillo. Badillo has got a bruise underneath the right eye, but I think he came in the ring. As round one opens, Naz works his usual magic, quite literally dancing on his opponent and brushing his punches off as Mee manoeuvres around Badillo, throwing effortlessly fast punches to Badillo's face whilst blocking him all the same. Badillo lands his signature left hand to the side of Nassim's head, but doesn't seem to phase him. Due to go 12, of course. No. Prince Nassim has only been that distance once in his career in the European title fight three years ago. Ahmed now just speeding up and using the fast footwork. Behind all this showmanship though, there is a good professional work with Prince Nassim. Smile on his face. And now he's telling Padillo, come on then, hit me on the chin. Oh, ominously for Padillo. Great jabs, those from Hamid. And revered throughout the featherweight division, a right hand does land there from Badillo. As the bell rings for the second time, we see more of the same from Nassim. More punches thrown, more dancing and more showboating. Badillo gets increasingly more frustrated as time passes, and Nassim continues to embarrass him in stylish fashion. Badillo tries to get more involved, and looks for openings on Nassim, but can't get any significant damage. I think both of them know that this is the round that Hamed predicted. Let's see what happens. Already he's landed with two good punches. Ooh. 
almost exclusively with jabs. Saw an attempted there. There's a left hand. That's rocked, Badia. Oh, oh cracking right hand. He's starting to move up the gears here, and that's good stiff right hands going in. Round three comes, and many expect the knockout that Nassim promised. Badillo comes in with his best effort, attempting to smother Nassim, but the prince bobs and weaves his way out of all the punches thrown. Nassim fails to get the knockout, but easily has the first three rounds in the bag. Badillo stays energetic, but can't seem to pack any power onto the prince. Well, 18 of Hamid's victories, 18 out of 27, have come inside three rounds. So Badillo's done better than most already. So I don't think he's really felt the, the full force of the Hamed punches. Yes, it is. There's, there's nothing really erratic. He's, he started with good boxing. Push from Badillo. He knows he has to try some patient. Hamed here waiting. Marked up, busted up around the face. As the round nears its close, Nassim puts his accuracy on show, using his reach to land some beautiful straight jabs and getting under Badillo's skin starting to slow and hurt him. This is the fifth round then. Now it looks here as if he's decided... At this moment everything so far to Hamed. I don't think as many would argue with that. Huge jab. And now he's going through the razzle-dazzle. Yeah, use of the shoulder. Again, that right hand working so well. And this is a very confident Hamed. Look at this, I think he's trying to do all this for the Sheffield fans, he's playing to the audience, trying to talk for Padillo, who's taking all this. There is the line between the kind of thing Ali and Sugar Ray Leonard used to do, and it becoming bad taste. Nassim's confidence skyrockets to an all-time high as he jives, dances and styles all over Badillo with incredible precision in his punches. <coughs> oh, there's that. Uppercut, which is not really a authentic uppercut, it's the corkscrew one. You just feel as if the strength's starting to drain away from the deal. Right, left hand gets through. A little bit more now, Hamid. And a right hand. Oh, it's a great right hand as well, but the left to the body. A lot of opponents would have fallen apart by now. Round six occurs, and Badillo seems tired of the punishment he's been taking. The pace is much slower as Hamad takes his time to scope out the best way to win the fight. Badillo shows his heart, but fails to land anything significant. This is the seventh round then, into the second half of the fight. And so far it's basically just been a kind of boxing masterclass, really. For Hamad. Ooh, right hand from Badillo. A little worried of Badillo. <laughs> Left hand there, and the referee was trying to leap in. Not too happy, took another big left hand. This fellow is durable, but even he was wobbled by that. Then a right. Blood coming from his nose. This could be the finish now. They want to stop it. The Dio's corner want to stop it. They've rescued him. They don't want him to take any more of this. And Prince Nassim Hamed retains the WBO featherweight championship. After the fight, despite Naz's confidence in the ring and mockery he made, he was respectful to Badillo and gave him credit for his power. Nassim then pulled Kevin Kelly, the WBU featherweight champion, to the side and announced how he'd embarrass and beat him in his own town, showing what the Prince's next project was going to be and who he was planning to beat. Can I just say, he's right in front of me and I can honestly tell him that I'm going to knock him spark out. I'm going to knock your spark out. What are you going to say to that, Kevin? Badillo, on the other hand, had left before getting interviewed, as was his usual quiet temperament. He would then go on to get defeated in five of his next eight fights before retiring. Despite his heart and chin, it was clear he was no match for Nassim and many others in the featherweight division. If you've enjoyed this video, feel free to leave a like and don't be afraid to subscribe.